what are the the reasons against the spectre is it just the the wall is super great and the the lane's pretty decent the lane's pretty decent the wall's Dying great you can even go into the normal punch and put a ton more damage out onto them it even synergizes well with the vacuum into the light strike array plus all of Earthshaker spells and hell even the tiny on top of that right so you've got great wombo combo potential now for execration well we've seen execration though go back into uh, some heroes they're very comfortable with in uh in game one up against smg bob played the lino that went 18 4 and 4 and then we've seen we've seen what tino can do on the on the tiny as well now the answer to that here was the necrophos which was already banned out from motivate so maybe execration felt like it was uh protected in some way considering how the enemy team uh, played around their second phase bans now I feel like you just go ahead and pick Fearless as hero now because you want the flexibility because this Tide Hunter, it could be Maceros' hero, Radiant it could be Set Zero's Radiant. hero. Yeah, yeah, and that's what they do. They just keep him guessing. It's also a way to like get in onto those backlines, right? You get a great haunt, someone's out of position, very easy for an Ember Spirit to just quickly go. Storm Spirit's already removed from the pool, so I think we'll probably look to see... Uh, a, a magic damage style of Ember Spirit this time around, going to an early-ish Ags. Five this is a... Remaining. I mean, it's a horrible Earthshaker game. There's, there's no other way to say it. I don't know how he plays Dota into Spectre and Ember. We saw BDZ really only get Dyer one good Echo Slam in, in, the, in the last Grim game. Surf. I don't think it's going to be uh, any easier. What are, you, uh, what are you fan of the Grimstroke with here? I mean, it's just... Uh, you're going to need to get super greedy, right? And I... Well, actually, no, now I'm not because quite a big a fan, right? Because how are you going to get farm? Unless this gets relegated to being like a five uh, Earthshaker coming through here and you just pump all the farm into five the Grimstroke, make remaining. sure that he can get a Dark Portrait pretty early on to counter out the Spectre, then like it, it works in theory, but I feel like you're going to get run over before that actually becomes a factor. I think the lane should be pretty decent. Grim Tiny is a lot of burst potential. Probably won't kill the tide if he goes bracer and like might go bracer soul ring or or at least Dyer bracer some stats. But if the lion's caught out of position, I imagine it would be queued this game and and looking for another hero just to protect Spectre a little bit better. But it's nice that at least you have like two supports that will have a lot of impact as the game goes on. Like if Grim just goes straight Aghanims to deal with the Spectre, he will leave him pretty vulnerable through the, the early game to the Ember. But if they can just play kind of the economy game and not really... Uh, do you want to play the economy game though versus Spectre? Because I feel like it's just late game. It, it won't matter. He's just going to win the game. Well, the counter argument to that is that the Grimstroke, like the stronger that you get, the stronger Grimstroke also gets sure. if he's able to get the Ags. Or... So looking like being the set zero uh, Tide Hunter and the offlane Spectre. It's looking likely. It could also be the five Jar. Nah. Nah. Come on. Where's your love for the memes? Ten seconds remaining. Five Jar is a meme? What are you talking about? No, it's not. Five seconds remaining. Three Spectre is a bit of a meme. Let's be real. Three Spectre is a lot more of a meme than a five Jar. I, uh, yes. Uh, what are they looking? It was picked all the time during the Singapore Major, the five gyro. I don't think it's uh, that big of a meme. So, <sighs> I mean, this does. If they're looking to do this, though, it does make Earthshaker's life a little easier, right? Because if it's an offlane Spectre, then at least you're not going to have quite as much damage to be able to take him out in the uh, the initial use of the horns. The downside is that people are constantly going to be getting hero. focused by the uh, the shadow step. So, you know, again, you also need to consider that. You've got uh, an Ember Spirit that's going to just look to be roaming around constantly, looking to connect onto whatever the... I'm still assuming that this is a Spectre 3, by the way. Motivate haven't picked any of their heroes, and it is cool. an offlane Spectre coming out from Maceros. I still... So, uh, yeah, you can just... You can't be on your own. That's basically Execration's uh, danger as soon as you've got this uh, Aghanims up on Maceros. Yeah. I, I still feel like Spectre's job is just to get on the Earthshaker. It doesn't matter if he doesn't kill him. If you take him out of a team fight with Horn into Urn, then it, it, how long is the Urn charge? Seven, eight seconds, I think? Eight. 
You don't blink. You've got no team fight. Cool. Ten Chuck out a fish up. Great. Doesn't matter. The, the hero is the hero's not going to have impact. I like this last pick a lot from Execration, though. I know it's not Nico playing it, which they've had a lot of success with when he was on the Execration roster, but a Grim Stroke with the Doom, a lot of synergy together as the game goes on. You've got incredible Doom targets. If you want to put Jackie on this, you know, position one win condition like we saw in, in game one, then the Doom is quite the anti-carry against the Ember as well. It's really good against the Spectre if, if Doom gets a lot of farm and, and can get the break. So I really think this game is actually... I think Doom's going to have a good a good, uh, good lane. We saw Nico throughout... May have been either the groups or their first playoff series where he couldn't go Midas because his laning stage went really bad and he didn't scale very well into the late game. I feel like they need but, Doom to uh... have a good game. But it's Luciano, not Nico. That's the issue. That's, that is, yeah, <laughs> that's the issue. I mean, he didn't he didn't have a very good game one, unfortunately for Luciano. Um, so he's looking for a retribution arc, at least uh, for him. And you know, we'll see if he's going to find it with their heroes. Execration have a lot of comfort though. Bob on the Lena, BDZ on the Earthshaker, Tino on the Tiny. Uh, everyone, everyone, super comfortable. Do we feel like they can tie up the series though and force a game three? I think if they can, it's off the back of RR. You're going to need to catch yeah. out Spectre and Ember Spirit inside of the same Soulbind and get a Doom onto that, and then I think you've got a shot. All right, well, we'll find I'm out. all for the memes, though. You're all for the memes. So, yeah, <laughs> you, you're motivated, aren't you? I didn't even have to. Mm -hmm. All yeah. for the memes. We've, we've, we've come to love the backgrounds and just, you know, whenever there's a there's a meme pick, you just have to go for it. And, and as soon as as soon as Motivate have an inkling of winning, you're like, it's it's the memes. You can never doubt the memes. So I feel like I'm forced to go Motivate here as well. Like, Why are you forced to? Because uh, of the memes. Like, yeah, because of the memes. I don't know. When, whenever you're here, somehow the memes prevail. And you know, they uh they realize you know they one of them is supporting them you know there's that camaraderie. Uh, I think this is oh my god this is such a good last pick doom I hate that when I'm in two minds like the last pick doom is mwah, beautiful but it's really good Luciano didn't have a good game one and I think Spectre even though it's a position one, I think heavily counters. Oh, sorry, position three, I think, still deals with the Earth Shaker. It's going to be a bit of a nuisance for the Grim Shark and Lena, how they can play a lot of the fights. So uh, I'm going to favor Motivate as well. Bob's going to need a really good laning stage as well. You know, he was uh, caught out a few too many times in game number one. So hopefully he can turn that around and have a strong lane, which he should. You know, he's up against uh, a, a, uh, an Ember Spirit. You've got that range v melee matchup. Although I still feel like Fearless is going to go heavily into this uh, Flame Guard build. Begins. We have seen the Lena though be a pretty favorable matchup versus a lot of the melees and the Ember. Though surprisingly, again, I have to highlight that somehow Ember's been doing decent in matchups we haven't really expected him to perform that well in. So, you know, we see Fearless is uh, another hero he's Grandmaster on. So, okay, you yeah. know. Yeah. We've come oh, he to reached it. it. Okay, it was it was twenty nine for a long time. Yeah, I think we we brought it up actually uh, when we last saw him play that. Hang on, your your ember is uh, a little bit slack in there, my guy. Mm -hmm. I want to see that that thirty voice line. Keep keep watching. I want to look at what it is. He hasn't. Is he used it just yet, or are you gonna go check? Okay. What do we got up to? I'm gonna BDZ. check. BDZ. Well, this is our first blood. First and <laughs> oh first man. Blood. Don't feed Jackie. He just destroyed game one and you give him first blood. Oh, yo, yo. That's, uh, that's not what you want to see. It's really not. So the level 30 voice line is my favorite medium rare. Medium so rare. So a little bit of a, a fire pun coming out there. See if he can uh, cook execration through the game. <gasps> Looks to be two denies is not going to help too much here for Fearless. We'll see how bottoms going however all about the memes mass ross five last hits early against uh tino's five as well you we've seen this denied. tiny at least for the position one really like the tread sage into the blink and then back into the echo saber it hasn't been going for the the farm orientated position one that we saw a while ago when tiny's you know were maxing out the the tree and not even going blink yeah, you just don't want to be this do-nothing hero, you know? Like, Tiny is so effective once top. he gets a little bit of fire. Okay, well, we're speaking about the Doom. Yeah, they're also in trouble. Tino so, you know, will push back Mastros with the help of the Inkswell, but 
Oh, I was saying I think Luciano's going to be uh, a huge X Factor here for Execration. It's not a good spot to his lane. Be careful on Masteros with his positioning though, you know, you still are going up against a, a Grimstroke with Inkswell behind a Creep Wave, so the, the Salve is going to save him. Backs all the way off, not really caring about losing a couple of Creeps here and there, just wanting to make sure he's as survivable in the lane as possible. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Mid lane, they're even making a rotation through, trying to do their best to secure this lane for Bob, considering how badly top lane's already started. I don't hate this at all as well, considering the matchup, again, we're you know, saying it's it's a bit leaner favored and you can get very aggressive with an extra stun assistance here, just to you know, poke and prod and, and force out some early resources. But Phyllis is recognizing this is just looking to completely pull the wave away. We'll unfortunately lose the, the range creep. Let's see if he sticks around for the experience. No, he's just happy with getting the three melee. I think you're fine with this though saying it's a losing lane for the ember spirit but that's not really why you drafted it you wanted to make sure that you can be this harassing presence against the grimstroke and against the earth shaker once it gets to the mid game so these little lane tricks are going to go a long way towards at least you know not straight up we got a man up battle right now by the supports cute is he going to win the fight or i might have to play around with a self oh he's going to go oh no oh. <laughs> Do you reckon he clicked the uh, the mini map by accident there? Because he, he May, definitely yeah. shouldn't have turned around. Yeah, maybe he did. In I was fact, watching, uh, I was watching a pub that Quinn was playing from uh, from Quincy Crew, and he was playing the Tinker. And uh, yeah, he bought back and accidentally clicked the mini map when he was trying to blink uh, back into the base, and uh, ended up moving Ooh. forward instead and immediately dying back. Luciano, speaking of the man fights, I mean, this might be a tide hunter winning a man fight against a uh, position three dude. Does he go for? Okay. Um, have you been enjoying watching the Tide Flex Tour Five through the Pro Series? Like, do you feel like this is something that could be a hero we see a little bit more uh, through TI? I think absolutely. You know, when you talk about the late game impact of a lot of these supports, you know, some of them do fall off. We've seen it kind of a little bit with the Yoga Magi's, with the Clockworks, with the, you know, heroes of that vein. But a Tidehunter never falls off. You know, as long as you can wait out those BKB charges, by the late game, you're going to have a, uh, a Blink Dagger, and Blink Ravage is as impactful as any. BDZ's followed quite the Kree wave down here. He's looking to get all of it at the moment. Now, Luciano actually still has a wave to hold at the top uh, tower here, so he'll at least get something. And even Bob's looking to rotate as well. Maybe penalizing set zero from his aggressive placement. Nice use of the fairy fire. He's, he's still just sitting down here. They realize that the strategy is don't let Jackie have anything. <laughs> no, don't drag it on the... Oh. It's just one. It's fine. That could be one extra wave they deny. Oh, it's a catapult wave. Maybe not. How's bottom looking at the moment? Grimshoke. Getting gone on at the moment. Q's got another round of the Earth Spike, and this will be a fourth kill for Motivate. So uh, from game one to game two, it's seeming to be the, the same tale at the moment. Tino is still having a decent time, and of course Bob is as well. That's the big difference Radiant's that we're seeing here, or he's hitting up onto his attack. level 6. Not that he has any uh, kill threat right now on Fearless, though, considering full HP and Bob lacking in mana. Actually, it might be the other way around, as you get the gush in onto Bob, but it's just enough to bully him back a little bit so that he gets the uh, the bottle refill. You see... Fearless can get the ace? Bit unfortunate there. He's got a bounty still to fall back on. He's also gone for the uh, one one three build. Still thinking about building up into the the orb of corrosion. Jason Luciano popping the call down actually, but uh, ends up being able to juke out with the quelling blade. So nicely done there to be able to escape the the chase down. I think if he got clipped on the first one, they would have looked to commit with set zero for the gush to follow up. You know, we are seeing right now Luciano's getting nothing out of this, and you know still. <laughs> Jackie doesn't care about the creeps if he can get the kill on the Doom. Winning uh, another death tally up here. We'll make him work for it a little bit longer, but Jackie 2 0 and 1. And now underneath the T1 tower, the mid lane, Fearless. Fearless. Just remnants out the safety. You see BDZ is putting a, a lot of emphasis on mid, considering he cannot win top. 
Almost another slight misplay coming through from Bob though. He had the Laguna Blade available, Flame Guard was gone. Now they can just collapse around the uh, the middle side of the map here. Even Mastros gonna yeah, get Bob. involved as well with the early use of the Haunt. And he's got the own charges to play with as well. BDZ. Mobile with the boost, 360 movement speed. He's gonna run back into set zero, but Dyer's oh gosh. He's is gonna to have to go for the, the long way. Can you close the distance? As the voice lines come out. Uh, yeah, probably. With the gush, it's up now. Psycho. Doesn't have Fisher mana. Radiance Middle Tower is under attack. I don't think give it to. Alright, Q will find it. Oh. I mean, that's the thing is this position five tied. All you really need is experience. You know, you want to hit up onto your level six as quickly as possible. Hasn't even put a single point into the Kraken shell, and they're still chasing Luciano down here. Fearless is going to join in. Top See you later, Doom. I I just don't think you can. I was a huge fan of the Doom pickup, but. I don't think you can go for, like, Doom's not a good laner at all. I, I don't think you can go for a laner who isn't self-sufficient when you're paired up with the Earthshaker. Like, this is a, a crap laning stage support. He's not going to enable your three. BDZ honestly really tried to do whatever he could by pulling multiple creep waves there, but you've already lost top tower. Jackie's already top of the net worth. He carried them in game one. Yes, of course, he got assistance with the Aghanims, it has to be said, but now he's... I mean, he's on route to oh. a, a similar performance, and now you're even going to take a stack away. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people would be looking at the initial draft and just saying, oh, but look at how greedy they were with uh, with Motivate's draft. You know, they've gone this offlane Spectre, but, I mean, realistically, the offlane for Execration is probably even greedier, going for the Doom and the Earthshaker, both of whom need farm. You know, the one way to get around all of this feeding on Luciano, by the way, he's getting closed in on again, uh, would be for him to take that gigantic stack that BDZ had created down towards the tier two, tier three tower. He needs it as well, right? So it's like robbing Peter to pay Paul. And, you know, it's nine minutes in. Last time around, we saw BDZ have at least the arcane boots by this point. He's very close, but uh, he's not going to get much more than that. At least you still do look like you're winning the mid lane and getting the tier one tower for Bob. Bounty. But they're looking to close in again. Oh. Be a little cautious. They were sitting underneath the uh, the smoke of deceit. And they'll still get an observer ward for it. Has to be said as well, Tino's going for a bit of a different build that we've seen from him on the tiny. He's really been lacking the rush blink even on the position one which do you feel like it's even more important for them this game considering they don't have a way to make plays and get back in the game i feel like echo saber is still fine because it's going to enable you to farm a little bit uh you're still going to have the rest of your team kind of supporting you so the blink dagger isn't majorly impactful you can see bob's closing in here didn't end up using the light strike array and if masros gets away here hopefully he should yeah, they got the vision Looking to play from afar oh, is Masters. No. no, okay. I mean, this game just, I don't think it gets any worse from what it is right now. Somehow Masters scurries away. They'll lose RR. They're going to lose Tino as well, Raiding. They've got no extra heroes. And <laughs> even bomb, Masters is going to join back in. The collapse onto Bob deals with the Lena. Yes, Tino gets their first kill of the game, but oh, what to cost them? It seems like the world. They nearly got that without losing anyone. They were charging up the finger of death there on uh, on Q. So it was nearly a perfect team fight again coming through for Motivate. Again, like when they when they team fight together, there are very few teams that can beat them. And Radiant's it just feels like down. they're it's in their element with how they've been able to set up a lot of these drafts. All right. They've got their first kill and Luciano is getting closer to the Midas. There's little things here that's going in their favor maybe oh, a, that is a, a zoom on a pause five tide <laughs> oh looks like this time they'll get the kill there's no escape here for poor old set zero but like you were saying yeah that's a doom on a position five it does allow luciano to finish the midas but instantly we see the smoke motivated looking to play with q and fearless the duo heading to top they might find bdz on the retreat they want a, a, a different hero with Luciano being in the tree line. That looks like it's going to be the target. Cut him off here as he cuts his way out. Bob's still nearby, but he will not provide any assistance. 
As Q would drop that first finger. Jackie Death is a little on his own down here. Charge and yeah, bottom lane, Jackie. And he's nice got a back. decent amount of stats from all his items, but it's not going to be enough health to enable these reinforcements to come through fast enough as they drop the Luke in a blade. And, and with the help of Tino, this should be the damage afterwards. Dragon save just the outskirts. Well, I was going to say, surely it's not going to happen again. He was damn close to getting away. I think there was about one and a half seconds Radiant's cooldown on the infused raindrops there. But uh, meanwhile, uh, take a look at what they're getting. Though Mastros is working on the Agatums. Netwithly continuing to grow, and maybe they're setting up for Luciano up top. Don't hate the Falcon Blade on the Spectre either. I feel like it's a perfectly viable item for this Spectre that needs, you know, a lot of little items to make sure that you're not just going to get bullied super early on. And yeah, Luciano, at least he was able to use the Midas. You know, small miracles coming through. It just feels like in the, by the, what, 17 to 25 minute mark, the Spectre's going to have much larger of an impact than this Doom will. Yeah, it's going to take a, a long time for the Devourer and, and Midas to really pay dividends. I feel like you're stacking for Jara to take this. I really don't see Execration actually farming this stack. Who's going to get it? I mean, Tiny's got... Maybe Bob will get the hard camp, but... Yeah. Now, Tiny's actually gone back into the uh, the max out tree before the toss, so and maybe him and Bob can together, fallen. but they might scattered it out. Fearless is picking it. He's just saying, guys, there's uh there's stuff to be taken here. They don't have the high ground so vision. Zero. They've got the doom again, forced to use it on the tie, but at least they won't have the ravage for the team fight. They're going to try and cut it in half thanks to the horn pushing the supports further on the back line. But in fact, it's Bob the one that's a target. As Motivate will pivot to the Lena, gets the kill to trade the one for one. They're still going to look to stick around as well. Jackie's stack? Oh, this is all Two his. Two seconds on the flat cannon. Yoink. Let's see if there's an answer here Tino's from Execration. He sidesteps the Earth Spike, but they've already taken a majority of the stack. They might even take Doom's life as well for the cherry on top. He's out the safety, so Tina's going to turn to burst through Jackie, but again, with the Agonims completed, very survivable. And Phyllis just cuts through the Grim Shoken. Well, they're now going to get all three of the big creeps, so all net worth leap. And that was even with them having complete vision on the high ground. It's finally gone away in 2-1, and if they can get this kill onto BDZ, that's pretty big, because he's only 400 gold away from that Blink Dagger. He won't want to use the Echo Slam, even just to try and make himself live for another couple of seconds. So it just pushes him further and further away from that key timing. And this is all without the Ravage, you know? That, that's still a big factor that they have been yet to have to play around. What do you reckon the probability is right now? What, what would you guess it to be? Uh, let's go 90. It's close, it's close enough. Another kill onto RR. Again, like, I liked the Grimstroke pick in a vacuum. And you like the Doom pick in a vacuum, but it just... <laughs> My god! Is he actually going to turn on Tino too? Okay, I'm like, hang on a second, man. Phyllis, you are... Oh, balls are still right now. He's already called like it's 15 minutes in. Mm -hmm. Hasn't even looked to put anything into the talents either. And, well, now he does. Flame guard absorption makes him so hard to kill right now. <laughs> Going into the BKB next. Loving this item build coming through from Fearless. Good mix of being able to farm as well as great team fight prowess. Oh, they might we'll catch Bob out. On Bob a little bit here. The movement speed's going to be the issue here. Bob's out to the safety of the tree line. We'll just go for a quick TP. Mastros doesn't even want to chuck out the dagger for the vision, so they will be slightly off the mark there with the kill, but maybe they look to transition this into an objective. They've got the catapult wave and the ultimates are the ready, but Jackie still feels like he needs some farm at the moment, not looking to connect with the team. Now, this is the issue, because Set Zero, with all this time, you know, you've put a lot of focus onto him. He's now finished up a hood for himself. So even if you doom him, I don't know if he dies. You actually need to look to try and commit a little bit further onto him, because it has been a lot of the magic damage coming from the follow-up that's been taking him down. I'm really liking this Tied 5. Like, I mean... Yeah. <sighs> It takes a while to farm out the lanes, but it doesn't really matter with how defensive you are, or survival, I should say. Top, haunt out. They've caught the position one from Execration. 
Just instantly, the global presence from Masteros, and they're even stalking Luciano behind the secret shop. They recognize there's no assistance behind him, thanks to all their vision advantage, and beyond godlike on Felix, the only thing they're kind of lacking is uh, some ways to minus armor down Roche. Two points to Gush, we'll see if this is enough. Maybe the DD as well to help out. Corrosion as well, gonna do a nice little uh, bit very there. True. And of course you've got Jackie who's just very farmed. So it'll definitely assist. It's still super early on. So Roshan hasn't gotten super beefy just yet. Now, without looking, apologies if you already did, but uh, how many deaths do you think Luciano has? Ah, uh, eight. <laughs> Correct. Not good. They're gonna go maybe for a Hail Mary play here, but uh, Roshan's gonna fall down. So even though you probably had about that five second Again, window the to maybe go in. Look at this, Dio completely controlling the area. Bob will commit the BKB, so at least I'll have the Doom now. Not to be used on the Tide Hunter, Jackie. Hiding in the mouth of the pit at the moment. BDZ is going to look to reveal the blink as well. We saw what happened previously in game one with BDZ's reveal. So yeah, getting nice the kill top of the gyro copper now with the back line of Doom. It'll force away from Motivate, but they didn't have the stun. So they'll turn back, cleaning off the lion. But now with the respawn, Jackie, he's feeling powerful enough, recognizing that all the ultimates are on cooldown. A perfectly placed fissure will hold back the gyro cop, though, Fearless. giving Tino a little bit of time to get to safety. But Phyllis is in trouble. The machine Machine gun from Bob on the high ground. We'll get a big kill on the Ember. So execration. Some silver linings here. Showing that they can still continue to take some team fights when they are behind. They can also get the kill on Masteros as well. This would be a, a good chunk of experience and go. It'll cost some BDZ, unfortunately, thanks to the reflection. Oh, that dispersion just being so annoying to play against you're like great guys i got him didn't even need to use the echo slip wait where's my life it's it's gone <laughs> little odd by fearless again like they had uh vision on that high ground right to the north of where tino is right now it only was up for about four seconds but when you're walking up onto that high ground it uh, just meant that yeah fearless he, he had the ability to re-engage but wasn't able to make the most of it what's that done to the win probability Oh, it's, it's only 94% now. Oh, doable, doable. Do... I'm pretty similar in game one, honestly, where they take the fight with the first blink on reveal from the, the Earthshaker. Instantly get rid of the Ages advantage, hold mid lane as Fearless. He's got Flame Guard. Oh, oh Echo no. just shy. Still, maybe the Flame Guard expires. Okay. Is the absorption now not available enough to get the kill? It, it is, but simultaneously, a Ravage with the finger combined to burst through Bob. First Ravage as well, 19 and a half minutes into the game. It's just how much uh, attention Set Zero has been able to put Radiance onto himself. You still end up losing Fearless, but I think you're happy to do that trade if it's for the opponent's uh, mid laner, and you also end up getting that tier 2 tower. I think they'll even be able to secure this outpost in time with two heroes taking it, so denying some experience away from Execration. Experience lead sitting at uh, about four levels across the board, so very healthy right now for Motivate Trust. Very close to picking up that Satanic as well on Jackie. So even without that Aegis, he's going to be able to stand and fight very effectively. Now Radiant going double... Okay, never mind. Tiny just switched up. He had Silver's Edge queued. He's going to go BKB into the Moonshard. It still will at least be Bob with the Silver's Edge queued. So having this available, it's happening up top, Tino. Along with Masteros battling it out. Unfortunately for Tino, there's no escape. He'll just look to do as much damage as he can before he dies. Simultaneously on the back line, Fearless combined with Q. We'll deal with both the supports and Execration. A three for zero. And completely unscathed they are for Dyer. And they're able to just go straight back again on uh, on Masteros. You know, he's got the Dragon Scale. He's able to earn himself up. He even got given a salve over by uh, Set Zero there. So things looking really good for Motivate Trust right now. And the thing is, that Shadow Step, only a 30-second cooldown. So you can kind of play the same role that Q did in game number one. And whenever he does play the Dawnbreak, you just play away from the rest of the team, look to haunt in and constantly be farming. Radiance top tower is under attack. Jackie still as well as Thank you. Top of the net worth. I mean, 7-1-7. Seven, and seven. He, along with his position too, is having an exceptional game. Of course, it's without the, the Alchemist to amplify that net worth, but it's just showing that Jackie, one of the best carries in Southeast Asia, his farming pattern's always on point. 
And when he can recognize to show up to these fights, and that's going to be even more enabled now with the Satanic completed. I wonder if they're going to look to go in on Luciano again, because he still doesn't have that BKB, and I feel like you just need to constantly punish him. He's holding on to a lot of unreliable gold right now, so the smoke's coming up. They are going to maybe Radiance go through mid lane, but yeah, they're, they're just beelining attack. it for Luciano. Luckily enough, he gets the TP away. But he is still farming underneath a creep wave, so if they wanted to, they could have Masteros look to Shadow Step in. Hell, he's even got the horns available. Well, either team smoke's not connecting on the map. So they don't have an objective at the moment down bottom. So Execration looking to find their second tier one tower, but instantly here come the TPs. Along with the horns as well. That was just a shadow step, in fact, from Mastros trying to push back Bob. Sets here. Has to use it very early, Ravage, but at least it pushes away the rest of the team to be able to protect Tino on his loans himself on the tower. He'll get no assistance. Bob's out to safety, but it's not going to matter. I mean, you just see what can happen. The Spectre cuts out the fight. Oh, Fearless. He wouldn't solo this, would he? It seems like he I might, like he in would. fact. He's got no remnants to play with, but Arcane Rune really enabling this consistent uptime in the slight. Bob's going to try and cut down Q. Might be forced to pop the BKB to get out of safety. Yeah, we're going to see that have to come into play here. Got a blade. Bob should be okay. The supports are not. It was another good soulbind as well, but uh, unfortunately for Luciano, he just went down too quickly. At least now, with the use of that Midas, he was able to finish up the Black King bar. So at least he can look to stand and fight in a lot more of these team fights, and boy, Radiant's do Execration need. Tower is under attack. They need some miraculous team fight, which can definitely come out from an Echo, you know, into a, a double doom potentially. It always feels like a lineup with a tiny. You can somehow get a toss back deeper inside the base and go from there. Those plays that we have seen. Be able to bring your teams back in thanks to the, the force reposition, you know, the Magnus, the Tiny. So we'll, we'll see what Tino can do, but this is all without the blink, so it's not going to be easy. Taking out Bob a little bit here. He was farming for a second or two. I, I love the fact that they've essentially, like, I don't know why. I, I guess wanting to protect their outpost a little bit, just denying the experience lead away from Execration. So that's where all the vision is right now for Motivate Trust. And again, you know you've got the Spectre, right? So he can always just look to use the Shadow Step, pick off any targets. It means that effectively a support can't go down there because, you know, Shadow Step now with a level 18 Spectre plus the Spirit Vessel, it's going to be enough to pick off whoever goes down here. Like, Bob will be able to live, but I wouldn't want to be anyone else. Yeah, now we're getting to the stage where Spectre can start scaling with his items. You know, we were kind of speaking about the progression that we might see come out for him after the, what, the Spirit Vessel into, into the Agonims. And it looks like it's going to be the Manta style here for Mastros. So you're not only having to go up against the Ember and the Gyrocopter, who are incredibly farmed compared to their uh, counterparts, but now also the Spectre as well, who... I mean, surprisingly, in regards to the net worth from position two and position three, so it's relatively close, but it feels like the impact our Spectre is going to be able to provide will be very difficult against, you know, the Earthshaker in particular. I mean, the main differential right now has to be, like, what Jackie's providing versus what Luciana is providing. I know they're playing different roles, but that's like a 4K advantage right there between the two of them, and I think that's the, the key difference. It feels like Jackie's just an item ahead at all stages of the game because of how effectively they're, effectively they're able to play around. Even just when he is on the bottom side of the map, you're playing a gyrocopter, right? So you want to use that extra vision to maximize the effect of the flak cannon hitting onto as many camps as possible. Even You just see, like, whenever Set Zero is walking around the jungle, he makes sure to park himself right in front of these creep camps if Jackie's off towards the side so that, uh, you know, you're, you're maximizing the gyrocopter's farm while also acting as a, a bit of a protective role. Motivate. Coming out to try and yeah, take again. a smite. Smoke Master up. Is just standing off to the and side. There Instantly the vision that they're able to find. A jump Ciara. RR. Simultaneously down to the southern side. Fearless is able to find both BDZ along with Luciana. So again, both the supports caught with their pants down. And Tino looking to join them as well. They try and hide out through the invis, but they've already got the detection set up and ready to rock and roll as Tino just has to rely on the potential toss back to safety, but Q will give him no opportunity.
And Bob, ironically, the safest place for him to be is on the other side of the map. He knows, look, if they're constantly going to try and gank us, we got to get the farm wherever we can. Although, he's going to walk up into where his own vision is. We've got a lot of uh, boys nearby, though. The Blink Dagger was just used by Set Zero, and at least he'll be able to deward this. So again, a lot more information taken away from Execration, a lot more potential for this Spectre to have uh, impact. Really? Yep, there's the Shadow oh, Step. Maceros. Actually going to jump on the back line. They're going to be cautious of Luciano at the moment. Set Zero, he doesn't give a damn about the Doom. In fact, if they can bring him through before the ultimate is committed, then they are A-OK -okay to continue on for more. And I mean, we just see Spectre. Radiant's you drop out the horn, instantly fallen. they have to disperse away from the area, the chaos provided, and you can't take you cannot take chaotic fights on Execration. This is why, like, in the draft, I was like, oh, Grimstroke, okay, that's going to be pretty effective, but, like, you, you just see what happens. You know, when you're going this Grimstroke, even as a position 5, he's gone into the Aether Lens, but, like, how do you run? Every single time the Spectre's gone on him, he's just been food, even if he gets a Phantom's Embrace on him. It, you don't really care on Maceros. Like, they're just going again. <laughs> I mean, the cooldown you needed, from... Like, uh, you either needed more farm by having this be a position for Grimstroke, or you needed to go hyper-defensive, because always, against an Ember Spirit, against a Spectre, it's going to be a pretty significant factor. And honestly, like, a, a Glimmer Cape isn't a great item, because, you know, they can just carry a Dust and nullify it. So it needs to be like, I don't know, a, a Ghost Scepter or a Four Staff or something. Just being able to provide yourself with that little bit of extra space so that you can get off this combination with the Doom and the Soulbind. They're going to try for it. Smoke coming up here. They're not with Tino, though. And look at the positioning from Set Zero around the board. But they're going to miss that field. Yeah, so they might catch him and they will. Baiting the Arcane, but it looks like Motivate's still going to look to take the fight. He can buy back to rejoin. Execration have lost one. They're going to make it a second as well. It's Bob's corner to the river. The finger to zap him through all the health pool. And now the look for BDZ is out to safety, but they have the ward on the high oh, ground. Right, not again. Down by the bottom jungle as Tino is getting stalked. Q is even going to make the pincer move thanks to the beautiful TP location. And Tino evaporates from the damage. No Doom now as well. Like, again, it's all on BDZ, and he might be able to land, you know, a multi-man Echo Slam, but they won't have the follow-up. You know, Luciano is not going to be able to do anything on his own. He's just stuck in the enemy side of the map, farming a small camp right now, hoping to try and get that Blink Dagger up as quickly as possible, so that, you know, at least you can maybe have that surprise factor with the Soulbind Doom, but hasn't happened just yet. Radiance Middle Barracks maybe has hunting fallen. for some of those tier 3 items as well. You can see he's actually holding on to the blast rig himself. He's tired of dying. 10 deaths so far for this dude. <laughs> oh, BDC is tired of dying as well. Ah, oh, it's a tough series for Execration. The low bracket match versus Motivate. They had an incredible series versus SMG where they almost knocked them down. A couple costly mistakes and you see just heading into another day with the stand in unfortunately. The uh, lane's being I mean, a... Yeah, he, he TP's on back, but he's just been spending his entire time standing inside the fountain. Like, the the rest of the heroes weren't ready to fight. Tiny only just respawning. You might be able to get the uh, the surprise use of the buyback on the Earthshaker, but you probably don't want to do so with only five no, seconds left. Here. But in the what meantime... Just put him in the grave with a Ravage like that. No buybacks. I mean, you don't want to call it with your tournament lives but they might be forced to do so. Mega creeps, the probability to come back. Minimal at best. T4 tower is not the only things left standing. You see, again, what Masteros can give them. Tino is caught outside the base. If he goes down, he doesn't have a buyback available. They'll probably call it with his no life. Meanwhile, inside the base, just more real estate being claimed as well. Motivate. A stellar, stellar series. It's on the back of BDZ. Try and get the jump in. Echo followed up by the Doom. Jackie, can he retreat or does he actually look to just stand his ground and man fight? He's relying on the, the passive life still at the moment, which is not enough, but it looks like the rest of the motivate. They've got the damage. It doesn't even matter without the Dryocopter. In fact, he can also just buy back and look to rejoin. As Execration, the heroes are in shambles. Their lives instantly falling. Still not going to tap uh, out just I think you actually lost, Luciano. <laughs> I'm not sure about that uh, that voice slide there. Nice little 
little bit of BM with the, they made sure to focus on to the gyrocopter creep that he was boots of traveling in onto, so he wasn't able to immediately join and end the game. They're just gonna go back to Roche, and uh, yeah, this one's over. Bob calls the GG. Another 30 minute victory coming through from Motivate. It really feels like that's their strong point around the, the 30 to 40 minute mark before someone's able to get excessively farmed ahead of them. And it was another great overall performance coming from the team. No one really stood out as like the key playmaker. It was just a fantastic team effort. And it feels like that can often be the case for Motivate, like we saw in game one. Like everyone did their role, set zero on this position five, tied Hunter, secured Jackie his lane, and just, you know, we didn't see the Ravagers weren't the X factor, but with how he was playing to pop, you know, some of the smokes and be the person, they looked to jump and force to use the Doom on, which could enable the rest of Motivate through the early fights. We also saw, I mean, how what Mastros was doing on this Spectre, like this was crazy. The, the Shadow Step is crazy with the vision they could provide and it just completely nullified any opportunity for Execration to find the initiation. Like that's what you are relying on. You cannot take chaotic, chaotic fights. And I mean, I have to mention it as well. I do, I, Execration wanted to die on the hill of this Earthshaker. You cannot go for a draft where your offlaner is greedy and he is not self-sufficient. Like that was what pretty much cost them you didn't have you didn't have heroes this game luciano had no game because you go for an earthshaker doom combo like i was a huge fan of the doom overall but i think looking at it a little bit more it showed how they could yeah. penalize it in the lane and that's the big issue for the doom honestly even the pause five was really greedy like a grim stroke needs farm you know you need to get those first couple of key items you got the eighth lens but didn't have the blink dagger or even starting to build towards the agonim scepter and i felt like that was the only way that they could come back into this game it was what we were talking about in the draft right where i was like okay oh but do you move the earth shaker to the position five roll you know just to try and make it work a little bit more maybe with the fisher stun you can look to set up for a toss back into the tower and get some early kills that way but didn't work out for Execration. A little unfortunate considering they did qualify for the upper bracket. They got knocked down immediately and then knocked out in straight sets, making sure that uh, their tournament lives will not continue. They'll finish fifth, sixth, I believe. And yep. uh, Motivate Trust have secured themselves at least fourth place. So uh, a nice little showing for them. They had a relatively strong showing in the group stage as well. So uh, it's not like they were... They were, all, they were going to be a non-factor going into the playoffs. There's always a risk when you come up against Motivate Trust on their day. And you know what? Screw it. I'm going to take that back. Maseros, he's the MVP. He had the highest kill involvement by far. He did the most damage. He enabled so many aggressive attempts. And I felt like he got a lot more out of the lane than he probably should have. You're not going to say it's because of the memes as well? You're always, you got to bank on the memes? Just a, just a little sprinkling of memes. Just, you know? just a little sprinkling of memes. Yeah. Or, or, or the gyrocopter in the background. Yeah. Uh, do you reckon, like, if you cosplayed a, a hero, what would it be? Not Gyrocop, not that one. Who would it be, actually? Let's take a look. <laughs> have you? I mean... I have not done it. I feel like if I could do anyone, it would be, like, the scout from Team Fortress 2 <laughs> is, like, who I might be able to do. Just a generic white guy. But, uh, you know, I'm, I don't have the muscles to do anything like Juggernaut or anything like that, so... Uh... I mean, that would take a, a lot of work to do any cosplay. Mm -hmm. There's always... Uh... You're very impressed with with everyone what they're able to do. We are we are waiting potentially for an interview. We're not sure if we're, we're going to get one just yet. But uh, again, uh, condolences to Execration, the fifth team eliminated here from the Pro Series. I guess we can speak a, a little bit about the uh, the next series that we've got at the moment while we wait for a potential interview. We've got Galaxy Racer taking on Polaris Esports. Now we saw. How was their previous series? It uh, looked like Galaxy Racer when they were on their onslaught. They 2 0 yeah. Polaris, and it was 32, 42 minute games. We also got the opportunity to watch those games. So, um, do you feel like it could be similar or Polaris maybe can, can make a run? Uh, I. <sighs> It's always the case, right? Like, everything can look to come together. We've seen occasionally Natsumi just go absolutely bananas, but I feel like the talent across the board from Galaxy Racer is just too much to deny. And plus, I've just got a little bit of a soft spot for them. You know, they, they're a team that they were the dark horse in the TI-10 qualifiers. I think they got up to, like, fourth place or something like that. And uh, we're really putting on some some amazing performances that made everyone take notice. So to see them go up against one of my other favorite teams in Motivate Trust in the next round of the losers bracket, I would be looking forward to that. But, you know, Polaris, the ex-Adroit roster, you can't really, you know, look to deny them or write them off by any stretch. Yeah, you can't. We, we've seen how they've been able to perform. They've had like 
shines of strong games and then you know signs of a little bit of a weaker performances but if they're on a day where they're performing at a high level then you know potentially they could be able to take this series of of course versus galaxy racer who they that was a tough series versus boom i mean game two was rough to say the least i mean what was the kill count was uh three to 23 like a eight nine thousand net worth lead deficit so i was still incredibly surprised the fact that boom was able to come back so i feel like galaxy race are going to come into this with uh kind of the revenge I, mindset yeah I, I saw boom post on their twitter like uh a screenshot of it it was like 17 minutes three, the two, score two. was three two yeah. two and he was like this is where it all began and uh yeah, no, it was uh, it was a great performance from Boom, but Galaxy showed that they're able to really take the reins on a really strong early game, and I feel like they're going to be able to do it against Polaris. So we'll see. Uh, we're still looking to hold out and see if there is any sort of interviews coming through. Uh, were you impressed by Fearless's new level 30 Ember Spirit performance? I feel like it was nothing different than his level 29s. Fearless is always a god on the spirit. This man is just like... I don't know. I don't know what it is. I, I guess it, it shows if he if he's level thirty on both Storm and, and Ember. You know, there's a reason why he can perform at, at such a high level. Did you know a little fact here with Ember Spirit? Did you know all of his voice lines have four words? Not sure if there's a law factor towards that, that, but uh, it is the case. Yeah, oh, you'll we... see it. Like prepare for a lesson, a flash of inspiration. What is it? Next up, medium rare or whatever it was. My favorite medium yeah, rare. Yeah, the, the 30. All right, well, we do have uh, an interview coming through. We'll bring Mass Ross in. Mass Ross, congratulations on the series victory. A uh, beautiful performance, 2 0 execration. I have to be the first one to ask it. How did it feel to play the uh, the Spectre in the offlane? Uh, I feel so fun. <laughs> like, like, uh, like new meta or new type of my play. Yeah. Have it's you... so fun. Have you given uh, many opportunities to, to play it in pubs or were you like, you know, coming into this draft, was it going to be a hero for Jackie or were you really thinking of, of being the one to yeah. play it? Uh, it depends on what the draft last and, and we can like swap all the hero that we draft. So if like, if they counter our spec so much to offlane that. Yeah, sure. And, and yeah. it feels like that's one of the big strengths of uh, of Motivate right now is that it's so hard to be able to draft against you guys because we saw in, in game number two, they had to get rid of Q's Monkey King as well as the Dawnbreaker. So it just opens up the draft entirely uh, for the rest of the team. It is, do you think that's because of the players or do you give a lot of the credit to your coach as well? Uh, I think, think it it's depends on Bart. Uh, we, I mean, the players just give the confidence to coach that we can play every hero, so so coach can manage the draft like easily. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Uh, now yeah. I know that you and Fearless are constantly having these battles of who's going to have the higher MMR. We saw that uh, in chat that you recently reached 10k. Uh, are, yeah. are you already setting the goals for 11k, or is it just beat Fearless for now? Yeah. Yeah, I already said like 11k, but but now I, I focus on the tournament first, so I just play like normally for good now. Man, good man. Uh, you don't have to reveal uh, the hero, but are there any other heroes? Like we've seen Motivate obviously throw around all these heroes into these weird positions. Uh, you, know, <laughs> you can obviously play the Storm Spirit, the Queen of Pain, the Void Spirit, the Spectre. You know, anything else out there? You don't need to reveal who, but uh, have you got some other stuff up your sleeve? Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's what we like to hear. <laughs> All right. That, that was like a cheeky answer as well. He's like, oh, you wait. Just you wait. We got something coming out of the hat. I'm excited. But uh, moving forward, you're going to be playing either Polaris or Galaxy Racer. Um, obviously, you guys, you know, have played together against both of those teams a lot, or at least the players. Uh, do you have a an opponent that you would prefer to face, and uh, if so, why? Huh? Pardon, sorry. Who, who who do you who do you want to face out of Galaxy Racer uh, or Polaris? Uh, I I I guess Polaris because the we know about the TI is like they're so strong right now, but Polaris is like they're still strong, but I think 
Uh, AI is stronger. So we want to face that. So you want the easier opponent. Okay. I mean, yeah. I don't know if you're going to be able to reach 11K if you just take <laughs> the easy way every time. That's <laughs> you know. <laughs> It uh, might be a little difficult, but, uh, you know, best of luck with that. You've guaranteed yourself uh, fourth position, and uh, it was really entertaining to watch you guys do your thing. So congrats again, and best of luck. Thank you, Master Ross, for joining us. And, yeah, hopefully you guys have an incredible run through the, the rest of the playoffs. Oh, thank you. Bye-bye. All right, then our first series done and dusted. Next up, we've got our, our second one, which should be starting in a... About 15 minutes, maybe a little bit less by now. Of course, if anyone's Hold on, though. I, before we do go to break, I just want to theory craft a little yeah, bit. Yeah, Who do I... you think, and I don't want to see it in chat as well, what position three unorthodox heroes do you think he might have been talking about there? IO3, let's uh... go, baby. No, <laughs> I don't think that's it. What the uh... hell? What do you mean? Why are you shutting me down straight away? Well, what what's an IO3 going to do? Well, hang on. The, it could also not be a like. three. Maybe it could be anyone. Because the, the, the way you like had to ask the question was not specifically for him. So who knows? Mm. They they could pull something out. I mean, there's there's too many heroes for us to, to go through. I'm just having a quick look through. Maybe a Dazzle. I want to see a Dazzle, Dazzle come out. Or an Abaddon yeah. for Jackie. That doesn't seem like his hero. But anyway, no, it does no, not <laughs> But, I mean, Motivate have, have already shown the, the class of uh, players they are, an exceptional 2-0 performance, being able to knock out Execration for the BTS Pro Series Season 8. We've got one more series for the night, though. It's going to be Galaxy Racer taking on Polaris Esports. We'll have that one up shortly. 